Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Hinks. Kevin, let's take a look at the four major indices before we get bring in our next guest here, though, because uh, we are seeing that reversal take hold here, led by the uh, NASDAQ 100, which is down half of 1%. Dow Jones Industrial Average down 0.15%. Uh, uh, SP 500 uh, down three-tenths of 1%. And the Russell 2000, the only major indice in positive territory and up only slightly. Uh, that was up 1.7% last week, the Russell 2000. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some futures products here. Gold futures up 7 tenths of 1% uh, on that news, even though the dollar is actually a little bit higher, slightly higher. Uh, typically, when we see the dollar higher, we'll see a sell-off, maybe some inflationary pressures there. Uh, crude oil futures down 1%, but still above $91 a barrel, elevated at this point and volatile. Watch the geopolitical news out of Ukraine and Russia. Uh, for direction there, possibly. And the uh, VIX futures down 1.7%, even though the VIX spot, the short-term VIX, is up uh, on the day just slightly. Bitcoin futures up s over 7.5% today, spiking back uh, close to 44,000 uh, after languishing in the mid-30,000s just last week. So uh, a big push into Bitcoin futures this morning. All right, uh, Kev, let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. And that's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio.com. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday is right. And happy Monday for Peloton shareholders for once, because uh, yeah. not, only, not only do they have earnings tomorrow, Andy, but the, just the news flow swirling about, around this com company. I, I figure at some point Kellogg's or General Mills is going to come out and say they're going to buy Peloton at this point because uh, the speculation is wild across the board. Uh, what kind of data are you guys seeing from Peloton going into earnings just based on fundamentals and not all this headline stuff? Well, you can see why companies might be interested in acquiring Peloton when you look at the Likefolio consumer data, especially when we start with the consumer happiness level. So this is our tracking of, you know, when, when consumers do business with Peloton, are they generally expect, expressing uh, positive or negative emotions. And for Peloton, it's overwhelmingly positive. This is a company that does a very good job of making its con consumers and customers happy. Uh, over 83% uh, happiness rating, which uh, compared to peers is significantly, significantly higher. Compared to going to the gym is significantly higher. And, you know, more importantly, compared to the entire universe of stocks that we cover is significantly higher. So, uh, Peloton, you know, really looks like one of those companies that has, you know, the subscription business model uh, built into the way that they operate. And when we see that paired up with a really, really high uh, consumer happiness level, generally that speaks to uh, low churn in the future and the kind of business that an acquirer would really like to uh, take advantage of. And so, um, you know, for us, with Peloton long term, yes, you know the company. The, the company's doing well. Wall Street got ahead of itself in a major way during the pandemic because uh, Peloton was able to scale so quickly with the massive increase in demand due to gym shutdowns and so on. But um, you know that's Wall Street's problem. I think from a Peloton execution perspective, they've done a very good job, and uh, we see. Uh, pretty good signals going forward. I, I don't blame companies for wanting to get in on the action and get this into their portfolio. I think it would be a fantastic addition uh, for a lot of companies, uh, although I don't really think that it'll end up happening anytime soon. Andy, I think you've touched on the number one theme here when looking at Peloton from a long-term perspective, which is if you go back to pre-2020, Peloton was a solid $30 stock right? Mid between uh, low 20s and the low 30s. And then uh, all this demand got pulled forward with, with this company. The stock hit 171, traded, you know, above 150 for quite a while. And it, but it came all the way back down basically to where it was pre-pandemic. Now, yep. let's talk about why they're so incredibly popular. And that is everything you just mentioned. They have a moat in terms of the, the neatness of their products, their app, their, uh, how popular they are. 
And so I'm not surprised that someone wants to buy him down here. Much like I'm basically reiterating everything you said because it's exactly spot on. Now, let's get to the fun part of this conversation. I'm going to get, I, the, you know, the one that confuses me, Andy, is Disney because I don't see the, the synergies with Disney. But the one that hasn't come forward yet that would be a, a, a good synergy is Microsoft, right? That's the one that I'm surprised we aren't hearing from. Apple is, a, is an obvious choice. Nike is an obvious choice. Amazon, that is, is, they, they've got boatloads of money. They like to do things like this. But Andy, where's the best fit in your opinion, whether you have data about it or not, the data about it is good. Unfortunately, what we have to trade in the next day or so is their earnings, not their uh, sentiment going forward with, with a takeover. Give us your thoughts on who's the best fit for this company. Yeah, I think I think the best fit for Peloton is Peloton, and I think that's what will end up happening. Yeah. I think this company needs to stay uh, independent. The stock has gotten beaten down. It's below 2019 levels. When we look at like folio data, demand for the products that Peloton makes is actually up uh, 33% versus 2019. This is a better company than it was two years ago, and the stock is below where it was. Um, and I would not be super excited if I were Foley to sell this company right now. Uh, the insiders at this company have uh, what some are calling a vice grip on uh, these types of transactions. They have uh, share preferences that allow them to basically keep control of the company if they want to. And that's what I think they should do. They have a really good customer base. They have a really good product. They've shown the ability to scale into unbelievable increases in, uh, in unforeseeable demand. Uh, so, you know, why sell at uh, prices that are one-fifth or one-sixth of what they were uh, just a little while back. I think it's easy to see if you're an executive at this company why you would say, no, we're not going to do a deal here. We can double this from here. We can triple this from here over the next three to five years. And we like being in control rather than answering to someone else. So that's where I think uh, this is headed. This is where I, That's where I think it should go. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And uh, you bring up a great point there, Andy, the fact that uh, the CEO and other Peloton insiders own uh, 80, roughly 80 percent of combined voting control in this company. Yeah. Uh, and they've been, you know, some of these activist investors have been coming out saying, hey, we need to get rid of the CEO. Uh, and, you know, you can't blame him for, uh, you know, the ramp up in demand due to the pandemic for that section of it. But I agree with you. This will be a hard sell to anybody because uh, if the insiders and the CEO don't want to sell and the stock has maybe bottomed out, maybe not, uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, a problem. But, you know, looking at one of your charts with the year over year, over year percent changes, uh, you know, not surprising. You're starting to see a pullback in app usage for Peloton. Cancellations haven't been that bad because they came out with a an update right. in uh, the last quarter and said that their uh, their uh, minuscule customer churn rate below one percent. So yeah. is this just people losing interest because that's typically what they do when they start working out, that they eventually start hanging clothes on it and not use it for a while? Yeah, no, I, I actually don't think that's what's going on. I think what this shows me, what this chart shows me is that the world has changed in the past year. It changed dramatically the year before that, um, where everybody was you know, either avoiding gyms or gyms were, were shut down, and, they, and people were desperate to get something inside of the home that they could use. Well, now we're starting to see a revision back a little bit towards normal. Working out at home down 40% uh, year over year really isn't that bad considering where it came from to get uh, to that peak. And for Peloton to be able to hang on to the, the um, extremely low churn rates that it has uh, is an indication to me that they've actually found you know, the, one of the first, if not the first, exercise type of connected equipment products that people actually enjoy using enough to continue paying month to month and, and to continue to do so. And our, our consumer happiness levels tell us that is likely to continue. So I don't think there's panic inside of Peloton. You know, if they ignore the stock price, I don't think that there's panic about, about their business. I think that they're probably pretty optimistic that their uh, consumers are using the product and enjoying it and willing to continue paying and willing to continue telling friends uh, that they should get one of these devices. And so um, underlying fundamentals for Peloton for us look 
pretty dang good considering all of the macro tailwinds that they had last year have now shifted to headwinds. All right, Andy. Now, Alex Coffey has referred to me as the serial optimist, but I'm going to look a little like the Grim Reaper in, the, in this next little discussion because the last two quarters, this company has done really poorly. And the, one of the reasons we're talking about Peloton right now is because they have earnings tomorrow after the bell. And so in terms of looking at the stock, how do you see their earnings coming out tomorrow? Uh, like Folio puts numbers on this. I agree with you 100% about the quality of the company, but what about the quality of their earnings coming out tomorrow? So before all of this, you know, with the uh, with the potential buyout news, um, you know, we were uh, pretty bullish going into this earnings report. We think um, the stock's been extraordinarily oversold and that um, the expectations Wall Street has pretty much couldn't be lower uh, in, in terms of going into this earnings call. Right. Like you said, after two kind of disaster reports, this looked like the reprieve opportunity. Now, with this news, the stock up 15 percent, it becomes a much more difficult conversation uh, to talk about trading earnings. But I do think uh, the biggest risk to the stock is this is the CEO coming on and saying, we're not even thinking about acquisitions. And, and then mm -hmm. all of these new buyers, all these new buyers reverse course. Um, but, you know, that if he kind of just brushes that off or, or stays uh, silent like I think he will, it probably puts a floor underneath the stock for the near term uh, that could be significant. So I think there is opportunity. We do think that the company is very, very well run um, in the long term and is in a good space. Now, even before this headline news was out here uh, over the weekend, Andy, about all these companies potentially being interested in them, uh, they haven't even confirmed a, lo a lot of this at this point. Did you guys have a positive earnings score going into Peloton uh, with the stock trading $5 below where it is now? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. And, uh, and mostly it was because, you know, we just see that Wall Street's expectations have gotten so incredibly low that um, if the company can't get over that hurdle this time, then then maybe the haters are right. But I don't think they are, and I think uh, the company will put out numbers that that beat those low expectations and and a and a decent outlook going forward. Although that's all clouded by this um, acquisition discussion that's happening around them and not because of anything they've done. Yeah, I think it would take a huge number for these, uh, the voting um, uh, portion of Peloton and then also the CEO to agree yeah. to any type of deal, especially after their stock's fallen so much. All right, great stuff as always, Andy. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. All right, that's Andy Swan, the co-founder of likefolio.com.